Summer is coming to an end, and with it, the time of state and county fairs. My family and I just went to the Minnesota State Fair this past weekend. It's the so-called Great Minnesota Get Together. It's one of those few things that brings so many of us together at once. A shared experience of stuffing ourselves on various fried foods and foods on a stick. It also happens to be one of the few times that many of us get up close and personal with a range of farm animals, like goats. Who doesn't love goats? especially baby ones. Their gait, their bleat, their tiny horns. But there comes a time in any goat interaction I've had where we lock eyes and I'm struck with this mixture of curiosity and unease. On today's episode, goats, giving a whole new meaning to wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. The rectangular pupils and auto-leveling eyes. And, a surprise at the end. I'm Devin Boker. This is The Wildlife. All right, I know, I know. Snakes and cats have vertical diamond-like pupils. What's the big deal? I couldn't really tell you. I know it's irrational, but something about a goat's horizontal rectangular pupils is just strangely disconcerting to me. Yet, at the same time, behind that immediate unease is actually a fascinating peek into the science of vision itself. The first thing to consider is this. In nature, there's always a reason. The second is a matter of perspective. I've often found that the answers to some of the universe's strangest questions suddenly become much more apparent when you stop thinking about why things are different and start thinking about why things are the same. Roots and veins, atoms and galaxies, or, for example, the commonality of round pupils. Our pupils are round. In fact, they're round for most animals. Why? Imagine yourself surrounded by complete darkness. You reach out in front of yourself and you feel a heavy curtain. You reach into your pocket to retrieve a small metal pin and you poke a hole in the barrier before you. Suddenly a beam pierces the darkness forming a spotlight. The round hole creates a round beam and on the wall behind you, an inverted projection of the outside world. That is how your pupils function, allowing in light in the form of inverted pictures which are translated into electrical signals to be received and interpreted by your brain. The larger the hole, the more light can enter. It's the same way that cameras work. The benefit here is this. Having round pupils with round irises changing their size is the optimal shape for animals most active during the day who need to decipher detail from a bright world. Lizards and cats have vertical slits, which are perfect for seeing in the night and ambushing prey. So what then could possibly be the reason that you and I have round pupils, but a goat's looks like a Daft Punk emoji? Well, what else do we know about them? They're hoofed, they're horned, they're herbivores. By the way, if you've ever wondered what the difference between horns and antlers is, Horns are like a bony part of the skull that's covered in a keratin sheath, you know, the stuff your fingernails are made of. And antlers are also bone just without the keratin, and they're temporary, since they grow out of a bony stump in the skull during specific portions of the year. In a way, horns are like conifer trees, while antlers are deciduous. Anyway, uh, hooves, horns, herbs. Goats eat plants, and they're good at it too. Some companies even train goats to eat specific plants and use them as invasive species controls for hire. While goats might be voracious predators to plants, they really aren't for anything else. As a plant eater, they spend much of their time with their heads down to the earth. Sure, horns come in handy for fighting off potential predators, as well as potential competition, but resorting to cranial fisticuffs is sort of a last resort. Instead, they rely on their vision as their first line of defense. 
Combine the fact that their eyes are placed on the sides of their head, which is a common trait in prey animals, and the fact that they have widescreen pupils, and you get a broad line of sight with unparalleled peripheral vision. Speaking of parallel, their eyes auto-level in their sockets. What does that mean? Well, when they lower and raise their heads, their eyes remain level and parallel with the horizon. Their eyes are like the ultimate camera stabilizer, and it's what makes them excellent survivors. It's not that easy sneaking up on a goat. As strange as their pupils may appear, it's fascinating to think about the why behind their wide eyes. But there's another place in nature where you see pupils of similar weirdness. And it's in a place that you'd least expect. The ocean. Cuttlefish. Firstly, cuttlefish pupils are typically more round in lower lighting. Bring them into the light, and a shift occurs. What once was round takes on a squiggly W-esque shape. Like with goats, a wider horizontal opening helps let in more light from more directions. But cuttlefish have to strike a balance with the chaotic lighting of their environments. Living in shallow waters means lots of light coming in from above, with a lot less light from below. The amount of light and intensities are vastly uneven. Adding these squiggles helps to find that balance between light entering from above and from below. If you think that's cool, just wait. If you listened to the last episode, Polar Bears and the Illusion of Color, you might remember learning about color receptors called cones. We have three, red, green, and blue. Cuttlefish have one. For a long time, we assumed that that meant they must be colorblind, but varying experiments have suggested that might not be the case. Confusing, right? It's thought that the W shape of their pupil helps to create a sort of makeshift color vision. Like I mentioned before, the wider the pupil, the more light is let in from more directions. That's great and all, but it comes with the downside. Chromatic aberration. You know how sometimes when your vision gets blurry, you see these sort of colorful auras around lights and things? That's what we're talking about. Same thing happens when using a wide angle lens. The theory essentially goes that cuttlefish and other similar creatures are able to use the curved shape of their pupils to distinguish between different colors by the relative amounts and focus of the different wavelengths of light on the retina. If this theory turns out to be true, it might explain how these seemingly colorblind creatures happen to also be masterminds of color-changing camouflage. Thank you all for listening to The Wildlife. Remember, The Wildlife is made possible by listeners and readers like you at patreon.com slash thewildlife. As always, thank you to Paul over at the Avast podcast. The link is in the episode notes. Vic Rumbaliga of Planthropology, the plant prof himself. That link is also in the episode notes. Sarah and Mitchell Schrammel, Megan McNeil, Karen Bergman, Kim Drolet, Matt Capel, and Christina Boker. Peace out, Rainbow Trouts.